Welcome to a really quick Blender tutorial on how to burn anything like this, any object. We'll be creating a versatile material that's super simple and can be applied to any other existing material. So let's start off by opening a fresh new file. We'll not delete the default cube this time and we'll use it itself. So the default cube is given a default material and let's make changes to that material. So let's start off by changing the material to burning material. Okay, once we have that, we split the view by selecting this area, clicking and dragging. Now let's change it to the shader editor, tap N to remove this and start messing around with the nodes. So let's first go into the rendered mode and start the material. So let's assume that this principled BSDF is going to be whatever material is already applied to the object. So let's just give it an arbitrary color for now. Maybe this will do and just shift it to the side. Our aim is going to be to create some sort of alpha mask to remove areas of this object. So we can do that by adding in a mix shader and having the other input to be a transparent BSDF. So once we add in this transparent BSDF, we realize that nothing much is going to happen. And that's because we're in Eevee and we have to change the blend mode of this particular object from opaque to alpha hashed. Once we have it as alpha hash, you can see that there's a bit of transparency because the factor is 0.5. Now we have to change this factor based on the location of the fire. So to do that, let's start off by shifting these down and creating or adding in a gradient texture. Once we have the gradient texture in place, hit Control T to get the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Remember this requires the node wrangler add-on to be enabled and then hit shift A to get a color ramp and just place that over here. Put the color into the factor and decrease this white all the way here because that's the type of gradient that we'll be looking for. For the sake of just making sure that our gradient is right, let's hit control shift click the color ramp to preview it to see where exactly the gradient is. So yeah, we have a gradient that starts off from one side and is very tight, which is exactly what we require. So let's place that here. And now we have to make this particular gradient be more noisy, which is exactly how it looks when something is getting burnt. So for that, we're gonna add in some noise to this particular coordinates. So let's hit Shift A, add in a math node, and place it right here. Now to the other socket, we're gonna add in some noise. So we do shift A and search for noise. So once we put in the noise texture, connect the color into this particular socket and wait for us to see the texture. All right, so right now it looks like everything is white, but let's just move the location on the X axis by a bit. And right there, you can see what's happening. Okay, so this is exactly what we want. So now, since we have this setup working, we can go ahead and instead of having the viewer, we can connect this color into the factor right here and hit control click, control shift click the mix shader to see it with the transparency. Sometimes it takes a second for Blender to load in the materials all right, so right now we can see this is how the material is going. It'll start and it'll burn through like that. That's perfect. But now we obviously require these details to be a lot finer. So we can actually scale up the noise by quite a bit. All right, now this seems like it's going way too far. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract some value to get this lesser. So let's add in shift A, put in a math node, and then put the value to minus 0.5. Because when we're adding in noise, everything gets shifted by 0.5. So let's just shift this to minus 0 
0.5. Let's take a look at the material. This is still way too far. So another reason as to why this is so far is because we're using the generated coordinates. Let's use the object coordinates. And that way, it'll work based on the object. And this should now start off from the bottom corner and then move up. That's a much better way to deal with this particular flame. All right, that looks perfect. Right here in the color ramp, let's just increase the black a bit or decrease the black a bit. And yeah, that looks perfect. And that's how this entire burning effect is going to happen. All right, so now that we have the burning effect happening, in fact, uh, I wanted to go from the bottom to the top. And since right now it's going from the top to the bottom, that's generally not how things burn. What we can do is in our mix shader over here, let's have the transparent BSDF as the top shader and have the principal as the bottom. All right, so now we can clearly see that it's going to start burning at the bottom and then burn upwards till there. Great, so that is just removing the material, but we still require the edge to actually be lit on fire. So for that purpose, we're going to have to make another shader over here. So let's add in a mix shader, shift a mix shader, and have the bottom shader be an emissive type of shader. Search for the emission and place the emission right here and put it into the shader. Also, now everything is getting this emission emission shader, but we don't want everything to get the shader. We want exactly this, but just a little bit more. So let's take the same gradient texture. Let's take out the color and add it to another color ramp. And then shift this down here and add the color into the factor. Now we have to make this side completely white and this be completely black. All right, so now we see that this area is remaining completely white. So what we should be doing is having the transparency happen after we add in this mix shader. So let's take this transparent node place it into this shader, take this emission shader and place it in over here. Amazing, so right now we have exactly what we require. Now, this area with the emission is based on this emission color and the emission strength. So we can give it a nice red color and we can increase the strength to maybe 10 or 30, whatever you fancy. To make this look better, since we are in EV, we can always switch on blue and we can clamp the value to maybe four or whatever your preferences may be for the blue. So let's maybe keep this at 300. So there, that is our burning material as it slowly burns in. If you wanna increase or decrease the amount that's burning, just increase or decrease this color ramp right here, and you'll have more areas burning. So now uh, we can keep this pretty low and then move on to making this entire setup be one single unit. So for that, we're gonna have to convert all of this into one node group. So what we do is we'll shift this and this down and take everything else by selecting it and hitting Control G to convert it into a group. So let's take a look at the group settings. So right here, we have a group input and a group output. This is a custom node. So let's hit N and then have a look at all of this. So first off, let's see what are the things that we require. The mapping of this X is what determines the area that's getting burnt. So this is the value that has to be animated. So let's take this and put it into the group input. But here we require three values, but the only value we actually care about is the X value. 
So let's add in a combined x, y, z, and then take this vector and place it into the location and take just the x value and place it as an input. So in our group menu over here on the side, which we got by tapping N, we now have X. So we can actually change this from to name it um, area burnt. Okay, so now we have area burnt as one input. The next thing is the amount of detail in the fire. So if we decrease this, we get much lesser detail. And if we increase this scale, we get a lot more detail in the burn. So you might want to deal with that. So let's just take the scale, put it in here, and let's call it detail. Now, the next thing that would be useful is definitely the color of the flame. So we'll deal with that in a second as to why color might be really useful. We'll show that. But now we have the color and we'll call this as flame color. The last thing that we could increase over here is the strength of the emission based on whatever somebody's liking may be. So let's take that and put that also into the group input and call that as flame brightness. Awesome. Now that we have all of these set, we can actually tap N to remove this and then go back out and see our new custom node that we created. So the custom node is currently called node group. So let's tap N and change it from node group to our burning material node. All right, so now we have our burning material node. So right now, any material that we have can just be placed into this shader. And then we can simply animate this area. We can simply animate this area burnt and get the animation of whatever object to be burning. So for example, we can start off with the entire thing completely visible and not burnt right here and add in a keyframe by just tapping I on top of area burn. Let's go to the last keyframe and then just decrease this all the way to there and then tap I to add in another keyframe. So now when we scrub through the animation, you can see it slowly burn. If you remove all overlays, you can see exactly what we are going to get in the output animation. So that is how you can actually create this sort of an animation. Now, the coolest thing is that this particular node group can be added to any material that you have. So for example, if we were to add in any object, as usual, let's go with Suzanne and then move it on the X axis and give Suzanne his own custom color or material. So let's go here add in a new material, call this Suzanne, or call it monkey, and then maybe change the color, or let's go to the nodes and give it some sort of texture. It doesn't matter. We can give in anything that we want. So let's assume that this is Suzanne's base material. Let's switch off overlay so that we can see it nicely. So now all we have to do is in between the principal BSDF and our material output, hit shift A, look at the group and put in burning material node and just place it inside. And now you see this is still black because we haven't changed the blend mode of this new material to alpha hashed. Now we can simply animate Suzanne burning up. In case we, you were wondering why we wanted the color to also be changed, we could maybe make the color green. So now it looks like Suzanne landed in some acid. So now it looks like it's an acid that's consuming Suzanne. In fact, acids wouldn't be this bright, so we can actually change the brightness down to maybe 20 
and we can see the acid consuming Suzanne. So apart from just having consuming effects, because this material is as such, you can actually make it as an appearing effect where you can make Suzanne appear out of nothing. So here as well, the green is like some sort of sci-fi hologram effect. So with this, you can animate a lot of things. I hope you have a lot of fun. And it's a very simple material. We haven't added in any charred areas, which we could do, but maybe for a future episode. Hopefully that taught you a lot and you can now use this group in any of your projects. You can mark it as an asset and bring it in to whatever projects you want. So hopefully you learned something, stay creative and see you in the next one.